Hi everybody. This will be the introduction to the topic of intercompany transfers of land. Let's assume there is the very big corporation of America. That will be our parent corporation. And further, let's assume that they have at least one subsidiary that they have control over. They own 90% of a subsidiary that we'll call sub A. So the parent corporation controls sub A. We want to look at an example of what if one of those corporations sells a piece of land to the other corporation. So assume at some point in the past a very big corporation bought a piece of land for $1,000. Over time, they hold on to the land. They're not doing anything with it. A few years goes by. They now have the subsidiary who needs the land. So the sub asks the parent, will you sell us the land? So assume the parent sells the land to the sub for a price higher than $1,000. let us say they sell the land to the sub for $1,700 to recognize the fact that the land has gone up in value. So let's assume that's a market price. And then the year ends. So from the parent standpoint, they have a sale of land that generated a $700 gain. But from our standpoint, these are not two separate companies. These are one company. It's just moving the land from one division to another. So we're not going to let them have that gain. So we show up a year later to do the consolidation. So let's think about what each company's own financial statements would look like. Now, originally the parent bought the land for 1000 but then they sold it to the subsidiary for 1700 So the parent would not be showing the land anymore. It would now only be on the sub's books but it would have a cost of 1700 The parent, when we look at their financials, they're showing a $700 gain from selling the land. Now, in our opinion, those are not two separate companies, so you can't increase the land just by moving it from one part of your company to another, nor can you record a profit. So let's think about what we want the consolidated numbers to be. We want the land to get reset to its original $1,000 and we don't want any gain reported. So what adjustments would we need to make? Well, once it's set up this way, they're a little bit obvious. We need to debit the gain on the sale for 700. And we need to credit the land for 700. That would be our worksheet adjustment. Now recall, we're not typically gonna do worksheets. We're gonna write it in journal entry format. So you would write it as a debit to gain of 700 and a credit to land for 700. But please keep in mind that no one is entering that into their system. It's just done on a worksheet. So let's go back to the worksheet. Again, our adjustments are only done in the worksheet and then we put that in the file cabinet. So very big corporation, as far as they're concerned, that gain still happened. So when they get to the end of their accounting year, what do you do with income items? You close them out to retained earnings. So that's what the very big corporation would do on its own internal record keeping. They would close the gain to retained earnings. We show up a year later, let's assume the sub is still holding on to that land how will each company's financials be reflecting this event one year later? Well, the parent won't be showing it at all, and the sub will be showing the land for what they paid, 1700 The parent still has that $700 gain in their retained earnings. It's in their beginning retained earnings for the next year. And neither company shows a gain. So what numbers do we want? Again, even though it's a year later, we still want to reset the land back to its original cost to the parent of $1,000. We want to get rid of that inflated retained earnings and get retained earnings back to no difference. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to debit retained earnings for $700 and credit the land for $700. So what's different from the previous year? Instead of debiting gain, Every year that the sub holds onto the land, we will debit retained earnings and credit land for the same amount. Okay, so let's assume a few years goes by, and now the subsidiary decides they don't want that land anymore, so they find someone outside the company to sell it to. Let's assume they sell the land to an outside party for $1,900. So from the stamp, subsidiary standpoint, they sold the land for $1,900, land they had paid $1,700 for, so the sub would look at that as a $200 gain. So we show up at the end of that year to help them do the consolidation. So again, let's think about what would the numbers be on each company's individual financial statements. 
parents still doesn't show the land. They had originally bought it for a thousand, but they removed it. Their retained earnings still overstated by seven hundred. Sub showing the land at seventeen hundred, but then they sold it during the year, so they're going to get rid of that. What are they showing instead? They're showing a two hundred dollar gain on the sale of the land. So let's think about what we want the numbers to be. We don't want the land to show up at all because it's gone. It's been sold to an outside party. So that's fine because both companies have removed it from their own books. The parent company's retained, beginning retained earnings is overstated by 700. We need to get that back to where it's not overstated. The gain on the sale, the sub showing the gain is 200. But from our viewpoint, the gain is really 900 because Originally, the parent bought the land for a thousand. It's now been sold outside the group for nineteen hundred, so that should be a gain of nine hundred. So, looking at the numbers we want to get to, what would be the adjustment we make? So, we will debit retained earnings for seven hundred, and we'll credit gain on sale for seven hundred to make up for the fact that the parent should be reporting the gain that year. Okay, so let's summarize what the adjustment would be in the year that the land is sold to an outside party. We will still debit retained earnings beginning. And we will credit gain on the sale of land for 700. So that when our adjustment of 700 is added to the $200 gain the sub is reporting on its own books, the combined gain of $900 will equal what we think the gain on the sale of the land was. The land originally bought for 1000 was eventually sold outside the group for 1900 In the year of the sale, they can report a total consolidated gain of 900